Yo, what's up with it? We back with another one. Beano TV. We got a special guest here today. You know what I'm saying? So y'all click, comment, like, you know what I'm saying? Sure. We here with uh, Notorious uh, Turns Gangsta Williams. Wow. What's happening, baby? What's going on? Good to have you on. Man, I'm happy you got me on. Let's get it. What you got for Pleasure me? Pleasure to meet you. We gonna get straight to it, though. Uh, I want to start where, uh, you know what I'm saying, your birthplace, where you from, you know what I'm saying, your hood. Born and raised in New Orleans, Charity Hospital, okay. um, Pine and Olive, Gertown, the 17th Ward. I just get a lot of, well, I got my name, um, hood fame, living in the Magnolia Project. Okay. Yeah, that's what we're familiar with you. Right. Magnolia. Yeah. Uh, how, how are you related to Birdman? We are the same father. Okay. Yeah, I remember uh, son telling a story about his life. Uh, he mentioned his father was killed in a homicide, and I think his sister or something. My our sister had a wreck, car wreck. Car wreck? Yeah, she passed. Okay. Yeah. But um, I guess y'all share the same father, so right. you, know, you speak on that situation? Yeah, he was, he was in a car wreck as well. A car wreck? A car, yeah. Oh, okay. It was like nobody murdered. Right, it wasn't no, 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 no man. We, <laughs> uh, I'm just getting the it'd facts. It'd right? been hunt season. Getting the yeah. facts right. <laughs> yeah, it'd been hunt season, bro. Okay. Yeah. And you came up as uh, one of the original hot boys, right? And it was uh, how many? What, three of y'all. See, this is the thing. Okay, it was a lot of us in the project. Mm -hmm. Um, so you had people like Keller Stone. He's deceased now. That was the big homie with all the money. Um, we had other people like Skibu. He out. Uh, a Logger Black, Chill Will, my best friend Hank. It's a lot of ugly. It's a lot of them, right? But, you know, over the years, um, people start going to jail, start hanging with other cliques, start, you know, moving around. So just Sterling, doing a Mosquito, and myself hung together every day. Right, right. Like, you know, you got to, in the neighborhood, it'd be a bunch of y'all. All homies, ride together, you know, get money, hang out every day. But it's just certain one that's going to be like, Spend the night, yeah, like, or like yeah. I might be like, bro, let me wear the St. Louis hat tonight. Right, right. Or let me wear the, the ones. Certain people you're going to share certain stuff with that you wouldn't do with your other homies. Right, so right. So us four click together. Okay, so you, Sterling, and Mosquito. Right. Okay, and that's where... Uh, and Donnie. And Donnie? Donnie, yeah. Okay, I, I ain't familiar with Donnie. Well, he, he, he got a more popular because... Right after him, I mean, right after we went to the Fed, he he had went to the state in '99. So I went to the Fed in no I'm mind. My bad. He went to the Fed. He went to the state in '94. So I, when I went to the Fed in '98, he come home in '99 and he grabbed all the youngsters out the project mm. who was, who ain't have nothing. You know, people mothers couldn't take care of him. Thirteen to fifteen years old and helped them out. So my homegirls in the project started calling them the Dooney Boys. Oh, the okay. DB, so you hear Wacko rap about him. Uh, the DB tell him, tell him the DB uh, looking for him. Wacko. Right, yeah, he talk yeah. about the DBs. So a lot of people, they names start ringing in the city. The DB that come from Dooney, right? And from one of the original Hot Boys. He had okay. a off, uh, you know, uh, 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 what you call that? Like some offsprings. They had their own little clique, and, and a lot of them got a name for themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. so what's up? Uh, uh, yeah, you mentioned. You just mentioned. Uh, Killer Stone, mm -hmm. yeah, y'all was tight. Uh, yeah, coming up, you say he was a little older than everybody. Yeah, Killer Stone, a little older. Actually, that's why I got the name uh, Lil Gangster from. Oh, okay. We was in juvenile jail. Killer Stone, like about your height, like about six three, six four. Yeah. Um, mean set of hands. Ah, yo, it's like you look forward to seeing him fight. You know. Oh yeah. Um, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. You look forward to seeing him fight. Um, so when I went to juvenile jail. Back in the days, you had to claim a project. So my best friend Hank lived on Washington Avenue across the street from the Magnolia Project. So my best friend Chia Will, until lived on Washington and Ferret in the project. When you go to Juneau, a lot of people, oh, I'm about this project, I'm about that project. So I claimed the Magnolia Project, even though I was out of, out of the neighborhood of Phillips Street at the time, right? But a lot of my... Childhood homeboy I went to school with, um, played park football with, lived at the Magnolia Project. Right. So I had a homeboy, he's, he caught on to a lot of people claiming the project. Because for some reason, we had an hour little young sick mind that if you was out of the project, you was tough. 
But by me being at the neighborhood, I was tough, but I still wanted to be attached to the project. So I, so, but the homie was like, oh, you at the project? What's your address? So I heard him do one guy that so was like, oh, I gotta get, I mean, you chill with auntie address. So I had an address. But what's crazy, bro, while I was doing my juvenile life, my mother actually moved in the Magnolia Project. So I was claiming the, I'm off the old side, new side. I was claiming the old side at first. But when mom's got the address, now, and when I broke out of juvenile jail, I was living on the new side, and mom was living right around the corner from me. So I was really, I really had license then to be in the know. Right, right. You had an address yeah. then. Facts. Yeah, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Noya back in the day, you know, I was hearing things about like uh, Master P and the Calio. Like Noya and Calio was into it. Uh huh. You want to speak on that? Oh yeah. Um, at one time, like I said, I stayed in the in the Calio at one time. Mm -hmm. Um, went to ele oh, elementary, uh, juvenile jail. Clicked with a lot of Calio guys. So when we when we all got out, we clicked with back of town Calio. So it was like. If me and you got beef, so you're not gonna come in and know you no more. Even if you come to school, drugs, whatever, but you might go into Calio. Mm. Thing is, I might hit one of the fella back. Yo, when if y'all catch him back there, touch him for me, and I owe you one. So we had this click going, right? This was I want to say we started like '93. Three years later, somebody robbed one of these people in the project, and they thought it was us. Mm. So they str now. Here's the thing. I'm back there one night, and the big dog, I'm back there by a name, Randall. He was this big dog. That's who P, he on that Bowden movie with Master P. Okay. That's who I ran with, right? Classic, yeah. Right, and Randall was like, man, I got to go. You know, he was acting a little strange, but he was fussing at this little young boy that was sitting on a bat. You know them baskets that come from the grocery market, mm -hmm. the baskets? So it was laying down on the ground, and the dude was sitting on it. So I catch the little dude looking at one of the other guys under eye like what's up like they making eye contact so i'm like what i'm peeping the plate in this dark back here right i said phone pay there's two pay phones across the street pay phone ring but they got a store here the store closed but they got the window open so a few people go there so we go across the street to the store so one of the guys jump on the pay phone so i'm about to jump on this other pay phone and call to let my people know hey i'm back here and then carry you with this person this person this person out here just give my people a head up. Right. So the guy on his phone say, oh no, that phone broke. Don't you don't worry about that phone. So you know how a person on the phone and it's you could like it's like you could feel like it's fake, like it's not genuine, that conversation. Yeah, you can sense it. Yeah. I say, yo, I say, give me three ways. Tell them to call the number. Cause I want to see if they read on the phone with somebody. I said, tell them to call this number for me. You got three way? Nah, dog, they don't have three way. Bro, it's the late 90s. Everybody had three way. I say, oh, they trying to trap old Giggity <laughs> up, bro. So I played up. I said, yo, I said, man, I forgot my money in the car. So I skip across the street. I had a, I was in a, a GS300 Lexus, which is called the bubble back then, the white with the gray at the bottom. I skip over to the car. I jump in the car. They let me get in the car. I pull off. I start up and I pull off. Bro, I want to say the next, the next day, if not the next day, like two days later, they killed Mosquito back there. The same, one of the same, one I, it was one of them that was right there that played a part in killing my best friend. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's when the wall was on. Oh, it started after that? Yeah, it was up and it was stuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, you said y'all had wards back then? Well, y'all still got wards now. Yeah, like, yeah. We, like, we, like we out the third ward. Yeah. The third ward, the only project to have three, I mean, the third, the third ward is the only hood, like, Ward to have three projects. We got the Magnolia, the Melfort, and the Calio project. Mm -hmm. Well, all the projects tore down now. But the, you might still have one building. Yeah, about the Melfort, still, means, Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's three projects in you know, our ward. You know, like the 10th Ward got the St. Thomas, had the St. Thomas project. You know, Fort Ward had the Iverville, Lafitte, 6th Ward, you know. But um, we the only ward that had three projects. Uh, oh, you said they tore them down? Yeah, and they, they didn't fix it back up. Look like townhouses now. Mm. Like that nice little subdivision communities now. But it's still hood though. Right. Everybody probably split around. Split right. Around. Yeah. Nice, nice. Oh, with the, with the word they say, I learned this in jail. Gentrified. Gentrified. Yeah, yeah. my daughter was in college. Kind I said, what why they you? did with the Chicago yeah. project. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that prior. Right. She was like, Well, I'm gonna stay here. Cause she was with the D uh Howard University. She was like, Cause it's gent I said, girl, you in the hood. No, that is gentrified. What you talk? 
the blacks and white. I said, oh, all right. I was okay. I learned something new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. They do. Uh, I was watching a, uh, one of your interviews, or oh, I think it was a podcast you was on. Uh, they was asking you about C Murder. Mm -hmm. To your knowledge, he wasn't outside. No, that's not my knowledge. That was a fact. Here's the thing. <laughs> um, no, no, listen. No, let me just not say this here, bro. Murder, Much man. love to C Murder, yeah. but, but a lot of people don't know the New Orleans history. Right, right. We on the um, outside looking in. Facts. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm a person, it's already known and stamped that I was in the hood, correct? Great. I mean, I was in the streets. So I, I used to live in the Calio. I used to hang in the Calio when I got older. We used to run. Matter of fact, there's a picture of 504 Street Stories Unplugged. He just did a story, right? And there's a picture with a, all Calio in there, and I'm on the picture with them. Hmm. So one thing we know for a fact, coming up in the hood, going to even from high school, dance, or, or concerts, everybody took pictures. You're not going to see C murder in none of those pictures. So that's all I was just telling people, like, no, C wasn't in the street stepping when we were stepping. And C's older than I am. Yeah, I know but, you know, C was in the army. You know, this is like nothing bad, but I just was letting people know, like, no, this is the history. Like, because you got guys that was really from, that's from the Calio that was blood, sweat, and tears that's really stepping that be feeling some type of way sometimes that C get all that credit and they be looking like C, you know, because C came... I always tell people this. For the rest of the world, you know, C was still staying in apartments and all that. Yeah, what I'm about to say. He went backwards. Like, he made it. He from the Calio Project. Don't get that twisted. He from the project. But he left. You made it. Millionaire. Then you come back to the project. Now you got a life setting. Get yourself jammed up. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so I just tell people, you know, he ran with the gangsters. The gangsters that I was at war with. He really did. But when from we was out. Yeah, but when we, because you know he had that apartment, he came back, got him an apartment, he was running with the real gangsters. Yeah, yeah. So they ran yeah, together, you know what I'm saying? So C not scary. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying he wasn't stepping when we were stepping, when it was really war, we was out there, he was in the army or in Cali, whatever, you know, doing whatever he's doing, but he wasn't down there with us. Right, right. So that's why I be telling people, like, no, C wasn't in the streets like that. Okay. Just clearing that up. Cause I, yeah, know. man, that his fan be getting on, be mad with me, because <laughs> I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Oh, really? Yes. C got a good fan base. Yeah, man. They love C. What about uh, Soldier Slim, though? We heard stories about Soldier Slim, too. All right. Um, Soldier Slim was the first rapper to put my name in a song that snorted a powder bag. I, when, I, when I broke out. See, everybody in the project in a round gave me the credit for being the first one to Mac 11. Mm. But that wasn't true. We got a homie named Claudia B. He's deceased now. He was the first one with the Mac 11. But so the Slim saw me with it because I flashed it on him because he was tall, young for that. He had that look like he just just, just look at everything, just observing. I was like, "What you looking at?" And I flashed it on him. Right? He looked. He just he looked. So when he when I'm coming to the courtyard, uh, one of his baby mothers, Dana McNulty, Dana saw me. And she got the Mac ninety for him and gave him the Mac ninety. So he could have parked me then. Yeah, she right? got the Mac ninety for you. She gave it to him. Yeah, for me. <laughs> she saw me coming to the courtyard. But she had him the Mac ninety. But our old head, Blackie Mo, he was, a, he, I don't want to say old head, he was like maybe a few years older than us, older, you know, gangster in, in the streets. Mm -hmm. So he put us to the side and let us know, bro, when you pull guns, you got guns, you need to use it. If you don't use it, you the target. Right. So he talked to both of us, but um, then Slim got that song, Snort a Pot Up, just kicking the quarter shot. Me, Lil Gangsta, Eric, and Black. He talking about Black and Moe and Eric Maurice, that's deceased. Oh, you was talking about Black and Moe. Yeah, that's what he was talking about. So, um, because, you know, we all, we, a lot of us in the project looked up to Black and Moe. Gangsta. Um, so, it's a piece, I got a piece of him on my uh, platform as well, Black and Moe. But, um, yeah, yeah, that's where he come from. I was going to get